Welcome back inside number nine. It's been far too long, but what a treat Steve and Reese have provided us with. Our first Christmas special since The Devil of Christmas, which still remains one of my all time favourite episodes of number nine. So, when a brand new festive episode was announced, I was savouring it throughout December. So, here we go. Let's talk about The Bones of St. Nicholas, where I'm going to deliver my own personal thoughts on the episode and invite you to do the same. There will be major spoilers ahead. What the Bones of St. Nicholas achieved for Inside Number 9 as a whole was lending itself to the ghost story for Christmas concept and putting its own quintessential Number 9 spin on it. The setting this time around is an old church, which gets most of its funds from people camping in it overnight in a trendy craze, or a crazy trend. It's trendy and crazy enough for Pemberton, a doctor named Jasper Parkway, to want to pay to spend the night there alone with his thoughts, doing a bit of brass rubbing. Parkway's difficulties come via the constant irritations of the church's host, Dick, played by Simon Callow, and later a whimsical, irritating couple, played by Shea Smith and Shobna Galati. That's your cast here, just four characters in a church. Classic number nine small portions dished out to provide a glorious feast. The church setting is directed wonderfully by George Kane. The dimly candle-lit glow and warm white beams of the Christmas tree provide a cosy warmth to the building, which becomes a navy blue series of shadows as the narrative darkens. You see, this church is apparently linked to St. Nicholas, the patron saint of children, and as the episode advances, we receive a little gem of a masterclass in words possessing power. Despite there being an ultra creepy statue of St. Nicholas within the church, the main fear factor of this episode derives simply from storytelling. This small group of people sharing ghost stories with one another, or personal stories which have had more of a major impact, are what drive the tale here. Shea Smith and Shobner lost a child while pregnant in a terrible accident, which is a more guttural, grief-stricken tale than the rest, offering up a recoloured portrait of the couple. You spend the entire time with their them annoying Parkway, telling bad jokes and having that kind of off-putting, pushing the needle too far chirpiness to them. But learning of the heartache of their history together makes you understand that they are compensating with additional happiness to drown out their wealth of pain. The reason they're so happy is because they know what it's like to not be. A really nice character redirection provided here. However, that's more of a real-world fear. The dark fantasy fears come first from from Pemberton telling of the real St. Nicholas and an incident involving the death and butchering of three children, which he delivers incredibly well, as Steve always does. However, the real tour de force here that blows the rest of the episode out the water comes from Simon Callow's story about seeing a jawless St. Nicholas while alone one night. The enunciation of his lines, the captivation felt by his magnetic voice and ability to craft out this ghost story like a spinster. It led to one of the most impactful scenes in recent number nine. Again, it's just a few people sat around talking with one leading converser, yet in this environment and with Callow's acting pedigree, it really did send shivers up my spine. The cast members here all did really well, but to me, it was Callow who had the episode in his back pocket. But then we get a delivery of equal measure, and that, of course, relates to the twist. Dick and Jasper speak to each other regarding people trying to find relics of old bodies and selling them for profit, a curious yet terrible industry. Yet this church apparently resides the jawbone of St. Nicholas, and we come to learn that Jasper wants to spend the night in the church alone to try and find and retrieve the jawbone. This was all really cool, but personally for me, I must admit, despite the ultimate ending being really savage, it lended a lot from The Haunting of Hill House, and if you've seen that show, you'll know what I mean. The entire episode, there were fleeting glimpses of the St. Nicholas figure skulking around the place, and despite the episode leading you down the path where you pretty much expected to see this terrible creature, described by Dick, I just knew that Steve and Reese never write that obviously, and that an alternate angle would be dished out. Though when we learn that all of the sightings of St. St. Nicholas were actually premonitions of Parkway accidentally hanging himself, yes, for number nine standards,
that it was a fairly good ending, though I couldn't get that image out of my head of Hill House and its use of apparitions being premonitions of a character's fate. Knowing Steve and Reese's writing style well, I would happily bet that they either weren't aware of this or were intentionally paying homage to it. They're simply that good as writers to be inconsiderate that way. In hindsight though, I do think that there may have been some potentially stronger outs, though more predictable ones than the one they went for, i.e. actually seeing Saint Nicholas as the creepy monster, or one of the characters themselves being Saint Nicholas. I did however appreciate the way the loss of Shobner and Shea Smith's child didn't factor into Saint Nicholas being the patron saint of children. Steve and Reese bloody love a red herring, and it made me think that Nick was going to pop up to claim vengeance on the couple for the accident and losing the baby. The script as always had your mind wandering in multiple directions, none of them being where it actually ended up, so I do applaud them for that. I do however think it's the weakest of the Christmas specials, including Devil and Christine, which was actually first aired in April, though was themed around Christmas. The location, Christian Henson's haunting score, the direction, and the performances of the cast were all super strong, with a twist that I personally wouldn't rank amongst the peaks of number 9. But that's just my opinion as a regular guy who watches stuff. What did you lot think of the bones of Saint Nicholas? Let me know in the comments below, and also just as a heads up, I've covered every previous number 9 episode on the channel, just in case you want to go and check them out as well. Until we once again reconvene inside number 9, I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls. Thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas. Cheers out.